Hey everyone, Kai Hatsa here, and welcome to a new series on this channel called The Science Behind, where I will be explaining the science behind some of our favourite video games. Now, because summer has just finished, I'm going to start with a game that I love to play during the summer, and is one of my favourite Mario games. Super Mario Sunshine! Woohoo! To start out, I'll cover something easy that I've been seeing at lots of times. Would Flood actually work with real life physics? For that, we'll need to do a few basic calculations. After digging around for a while, I found that Mario's weight is a staggering 84 kilograms. The second thing to work out, in order to help work out the force that is needed for the hover nozzle to function properly, is the capacity of Flood's tank, which can be worked out with some pixel measurements and comes to about 11 litres. Put that into perspective, when Flood is full, Mario is carrying 11 kilograms of what would be a full-sized water cooler bottle on his back. Adding that onto his already staggering weight would result in the total weight needing to be carried at 95 kilograms. Now, according to the Mario Wiki, Flood propels Mario at about 1 meter every 4 seconds, which equates to Mario traveling 25 centimeters every second, not very much at all. Overall, Flood's maximum carrying weight comes to around 6 kilograms, which means that Mario is far too heavy to be propelled upwards by Flood, even the water tank is 5 kilograms too heavy. Oh well, let's look at something that might be a bit more plausible. Goop! The main objective of the game, aside from rescuing Peach, is to clean up the island from all of the goop that Bowser Jr. has created. But just what is this goop made of? Well, there is not one, but three possible options for what this mysterious paint could be made of. Number one! Hydroxethyl cellulose, although you may know it under its more common name, natrosol. Natrosol is a polymer that is highly viscous when in water and has its most common use being used to create slime, due to its texture. Even though more often than not it is seen as being green in colour, natrosol can be dyed any colour you like, which makes it perfect for the role of goop. However, much of the goop seen within the game is multicoloured or changes colour, so this is probably the least viable option. Number 2 Paramagnetic paint Paramagnetic paint is one of the many things that has captivated the internet over the years with all of the fake videos showing off colour changing cars. However, this is actually a real type of paint that has been developed by Nissan, but has not been commercially released by them at the time this video was made, although it has been released by some other companies. The paint works by having an electric current run through several layers of the paint to produce a colour. Layers of paint can also be overlapped so that more than one colour can be produced. This electrification would also explain the Phantom Antas on Serena Beach and the electrified goop that they produce. However, streaks of differently coloured paint can be seen mixed in with the rest of the colour changing goop. But I'm going to pass that off as irrelevant right now. The other hole in the suggestion is that paramagnetic paint is often produced to be environmentally friendly, and would likely not cause significant damage to the environment, but there is the chance that whatever EGAD made the paint out of isn't strictly eco-friendly. Electroluminescent paint is also similar to paramagnetic paint, and it also needs electric currents to work properly. The paint is one particular colour, but once an electrical current is passed through it, it will light up until the current is switched off. This makes it another prime candidate for the role of goop. This video even shows electroluminescent paint working properly only 10 minutes after application, so it is still fresh like the paint in Sunshine. However, this paint falls short in the colour changing category, like Natrosol. Number 3 Thermochromic paint Thermochromic paint, like the name suggests, is sensitive to heat and can change its colour accordingly. They can be made out of many different things including liquid crystals and numerous compounds such as titanium dioxide, zinc oxide, indium oxide, and lead oxide. The first two compounds are white, but then turn yellow when heated, while the other two are yellow, but turn a yellowy brown colour when heated. The last two show similarities to the brown goop that is seen in Bianco Hills. From the opening cutscene of the game, we can see that the island is close to what I think is the equator of the Mushroom Kingdom, so the average temperature is probably around 30 degrees Celsius, which means that the thermochromic paint is a definite possibility, and the locations and places on Isle Delfino could play a part in the colour of the goop. The lava goop found in Pianta Village could also be explained with thermochromism. All in all, it seems that the goop used is a blend of paramagnetic and thermochromic paint, which, due to some of the compounds I covered, could be very poisonous and harmful to the environment. The obvious thing to cover after figuring out the goop mystery would be the magic paintbrush, which is what I'm going to do. The magic paintbrush is the main weapon of destruction used to vandalise Isle Delfino throughout the game by Bowser's extremely annoying son. It was invented by Professor Egad, first seen in Luigi's Mansion, and then supposedly stolen by Bowser Jr. However, it is never clear at any point how it actually works, but like most things in this game, it can be explained with science, common sense, and some basic electronics knowledge. The first thing to notice about the brush is its shape. Now, you may be saying right now that that's not really an important thing, but in fact, it is. I'll explain why in a bit. 
Now, by looking at several screenshots and pieces of footage from instances where the brush appears, we can get a clear image of the brush's shape. The brush is wide at the base of the bristles near the ferrule, and then curves to a blunt point at the top. The ferrule itself is wide, but thin if you look at it from one side, while the crimp is rounded with EGAD's logo on it. The handle of the brush is also relatively thin at the bottom, but increases in size when it reaches the crimp. Putting all of these factors together gives us two brush possibilities, a large round brush or a filbert. The round brush is what most people think of when you say paintbrush, and rightly so. It is one of the most used types of paintbrushes and produces varying strokes based on its size and the way that it's held, which would make it a prime candidate for the job for vandalization. However, the ferrule on the Magic Paintbrush is not rounded like that of a round brush, and is instead flat on one side and wide on the other, but is still oval in shape. This and the shape of the bristles point to the Magic Paintbrush being a filbert rather than a round brush. Now, remember how I said size is important? Well, this is where it comes in. The paintbrush never seems to run out of goop, which leaves us with a problem. Where does it all come from? There's two solutions to this. One, being that Shadow Mario has a large palette hidden somewhere on the island, or that the paintbrush has a small storage of goop inside of it that can be replenished every so often. The other issue is power. Now that we have found out that the goop is most likely power magnetic paint or thermochromic paint, there must be a way of sending at least a weak charge through it to power it and make it change colour, which means that there must be a battery within the brush as well. Thermochromism in this case would be naturally caused by the environment. Here's where the size comes in. If the brush was rounded, there would be no way that it would be able to fit all of this inside of it. But, because it is a filbert, the ferrule and crimp are substantially bigger, meaning that there would be just enough room to fit a small storage tank for some goop, and a small battery as well. Because of this, the brush would probably be substantially heavier than it looks, but it would still be operational. Now, we're nearly done with Super Mario Sunshine, but I have one more topic left to cover that actually popped up while I was doing some research, the boss battle. As you may know, the final level of the game takes place in the island's volcano, Corona Mountain, which involves making your way to the top of the mountain to fight Bowser and his son in a large hot tub. Now, as ridiculous as this sounds, it's actually kind of plausible. First of all, you probably notice how the tub seems to be floating in midair, which can be easily explained. There is most likely propellers of some sort on the underside of each arm of the tub, like seen on some of Bowser's airships, which also explains why it ends up falling out of the sky when Mario destroys them. The other thing I wanted to cover is that when researching about the goop in the game, I came across an article stating that the liquid in the tub is slime. It is quite possible that the slime is in fact natrosol, as it is described as having a gelatinous consistency, but I have a much better explanation than that. If you look very closely at the tourist map entry for Corona Mountain, it would appear that the entrance into the mountain is actually a spa, which explains the water there. The very pixelated description seems to hint at a spring or stream of volcanic water running down the mountain that you can climb up and look at. This means that the liquid inside Bowser's hot tub is in fact filled with volcanic water. This would also explain the colour of the water, as volcanic water is usually a pale blue or green colour, due to the minerals present in it such as silica, which makes the water go cloudy. This also links directly with a key event in Sunshine, the flooding of Delfino Plaza, which was most likely due to Bowser trying to fill the tub, and in the process bursting a pipe or two. One thing to mention here though is that the spillage could be on purpose. Geothermal plants in Iceland often dump excess geothermal water in volcanic ditches and valleys nearby to the plants. The Mario Wiki also describes the event as the plaza being flooded with boiling water. All of that being said, geothermal water is relaxing and good for the skin, so I don't blame the guy. The tub would also have to be relatively close to the crater in order to be heated, and with that, I'll finally disprove something else. When the tub overturned at the end of the boss battle, the proximity of the crater means that Mario and everyone else would not have been flung to safety, and would have in fact plummeted to their deaths in the lava below. Thanks for watching all of the video. Have a suggestion for a game you want me to cover? Leave it in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more science behind videos, as well as some more stuff on its way. Thanks for watching.